My name is Daniel, and this is True North News. In this episode, we will be focusing on refugees in Canada. Specifically, we will focus on the recent influx of asylum claimants over the southern border. But we will also touch on the 50,000 Syrian refugees Canada has accepted since 2015. Since January 2017, the number of asylum claimants crossing the southern border of Canada has increased dramatically. In 2016, there was a total of 2,464 asylum claimants apprehended attempting to cross the 49th parallel. In 2017, this figure jumped to 20,593. The 2018 numbers are on pace to exceed this figure, with 10,744 claimants apprehended as of July, two and a half times the number at this time last year. This is a total of 31,000 unplanned asylum claimants that have entered Canada in just the last 18 months. This sudden and persistent increase in border crossers is generally attributed to two main factors. First off, January 2017 is when Donald Trump officially took office as the President of the United States of America and launched his strict anti-immigration policies, threatening to deport millions of illegal immigrants across the country. Second was the response of Canada's virtue signaler-in-chief, Justin Trudeau. The Prime Minister released his now infamous hashtag Welcome to Canada tweet encouraging America's unwanted huddled masses to make their way north into the welcoming arms of Canada, creating some sort of modern underground railroad. This tweet has since become one of the most circulated tweets in 2017, with over 400,000 retweets and effectively opened Canada's borders without any sort of electoral mandate. Of course, these factors were merely the initial cracks in the dam. Once a steady stream of claimants demonstrated there was a path to Canada without persecution, the flood began. It is not Trudeau's actions as much as inactions that have caused this problem. Government officials have struggled to define these asylum claimants, and for good reason. Conservative members of Parliament, notably Shadow Immigration Minister Michelle Rempel, have referred to asylum claimants as illegal border crossers. Members from the Liberal Party have accused the Conservatives of fear-mongering, instead preferring the term irregular migrants. But who's right, and why the disparity in terminology? As usual, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Asylum claimants are taking advantage of loopholes in several Canadian laws, including the Customs Act and the Safe Third Country Agreement. These asylum claimants are crossing the border illegally. Crossing the Canadian border anywhere other than an official port of entry is in a violation of the Customs Act. As a result, claimants are apprehended by the RCMP immediately upon crossing the border, but due to Canada's obligations under the 1951 UN Refugee Convention, as well as clauses in the Canadian Constitution, anyone who claims asylum status has the right to a hearing to determine said claim's legitimacy. As a result, all criminal charges are dropped until after the hearing. By crossing the border between official ports of entry, asylum claimants are simultaneously taking advantage of a loophole in the Safe Third Country Agreement. If claimants attempted to cross the border at an official port of entry, they would be turned back as they would already be considered safe, and therefore ineligible for asylum seeker status. By crossing between ports of entry, claimants avoid the effects of this agreement. To learn more about the Safe Third Country Agreement, check out our Quick Facts video on the subject. On the topic of rhetoric, there have been a few other contentious terms used by different MPs to score partisan political points. Progressive Conservative MPPs in Ontario and Federal Conservative MPs have referred to the border crossers as queue jumpers, implying that asylum claimants that are illegally crossing the border are butting ahead of refugees applying for status through proper channels. Liberal Immigration Minister Ahmed Hussein has pointed out this claim is factually untrue. These two streams of refugees are processed by entirely different institutions. Regular refugees are processed by Immigrations, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada, or IRCC, whereas asylum claimants are processed by the Immigration and Refugee Board, or IRB. Despite this inaccuracy, the Tories are not without point. While border crossers are not affecting the processing of regular refugees, they are taking up resources such as socialized housing and other funds that would be otherwise used on those fleeing war-torn states rather than Trump's harsh rhetoric. The Tories have also been criticized for their use of the term crisis to describe the situation. Liberal MPs prefer to call it a challenge. Conservative politicians clearly intend to evoke images of various European states where a refugee crisis is apparent. Spikes in crime rates and the emergence of no-go zones have become a problem in many European countries, but Canada's situation is only so comparable. The number of refugees and asylum claimants in Canada do not compare to the numbers taken in by countries like Germany. 
who has accepted over a million refugees since 2015. And Canada's distance from troubled nations has insulated our problem from escalating out of control. Further, while the 2018 figures are on pace to exceed last year's total, recent figures show the number of border crossers is actually on the decline compared to the steady increase we've seen since 2017. While this may not be a national crisis, it is certainly a provincial and municipal one, as provinces like Ontario and Quebec, as well as cities like Toronto and Montreal, are struggling to deal with the sharp influx of economically disadvantaged asylum claimants. Montreal has transformed its Olympic Stadium into a tent city. Toronto has spent $90 million on social assistance as well as an additional $75 million on shelters. Toronto shelter services are completely overloaded, forcing the city's already large homeless population back onto the streets. 800 excess asylum seekers were being temporarily housed in college dormitories at Centennial and Humber Colleges, but with students set to return to school, these asylum claimants are being moved to hotels at taxpayer expense. To support the influx of border crossers, the government of Quebec requires $146 million, and the city of Toronto alone requires an additional $64 million. The federal government has provided a meager $50 million to be shared by Quebec, Ontario, and Manitoba with $36 million going to Quebec, $11 million going to Ontario, and $3 million going to Manitoba. The new Doug Ford government in Ontario has been particularly critical of the feds, claiming they are 100% responsible for the influx of asylum seekers, and as such, they should be 100% economically responsible as well. Lisa McLeod, Ontario's Minister of Children, Community, and Social Services, has demanded an additional $200 million from the federal government. When the premiers met at the Council of the Federation in mid-July, Quebec Premier Philippe Couillard and Manitoba Premier Brian Pallister joined Ford in holding the federal government to account for insufficient border security, as well as demanding full economic support to deal with the associated issues. The influx has also created a massive backlog in the processing of asylum claims. As of March 31st, there were up to 48,974 claims that required processing. And considering the IRB can only process 1 to 2,000 claims per month, this backup will take a minimum of a year and a half to clear up, and that's assuming claims stopped being filed four months ago. This is a costly process considering claimants are eligible for government social assistance while waiting for their claim to be processed, despite not having paid into the system, and that many of their claims will be determined to be illegitimate, in which case they will be deported back to their country of origin also on taxpayer dime and many of their claims will be found illegitimate. 85% of claimants are from Nigeria, and the majority of the remainder are from Haiti. Refugee and asylum status is reserved for those that face political persecution, danger, or torture upon re-entry of their home country. Unlike Syria, Nigeria nor Haiti are war-torn countries, and while some claimants have been eligible, such as Nigerians from areas controlled by Boko Haram and homosexuals fleeing Haiti, the majority of claimants appear to be economic migrants whose claims will be inevitably rejected. In fact, many of the Haitian claimants are simply fleeing America after having their already temporary refugee status revoked by President Trump, considering the improvements to their country since the earthquake eight years ago. While perhaps not a national crisis, this does appear to be a provincial crisis for both Quebec and Ontario, with mounting costs for taxpayers across the country. While the federal government's response to the influx of asylum claimants has been weak, it has not been absolutely nothing, as claimed by Michelle Rempel. In their last budget, the Liberal government designated $173 million to increase processing times, as well as $50 million for temporary housing, in addition to the $50 million provided to the three most effective provinces. Of course, this money has more gone towards addressing the symptoms of the problem, rather than the problem itself. In terms of diplomacy, the Trudeau administration persuaded the American officials to curb the number of visitor visas provided to Nigerians. The government also sent Immigration Minister Ahmed Hussein to Nigeria to dissuade illegal border crossing directly, as well as Haitian-born MP Emmanuel Duberg to Haitian diaspora communities in Florida to inform those thinking of crossing the border illegally that most of them will be deported. Finally, in the recent cabinet reshuffling, Trudeau appointed MP Bill Blair, previously Toronto Police Commissioner, as Minister of Border Security and Organized Crime Reduction. Although it is not exactly clear what this position entails. What do you do if the agencies, if the agencies are responsible for this issue don't report to you, then what do you do as Minister? 
I have been given a responsibility to work across a number of different ministries okay. in, in order to address the challenges that we, we face in dealing with irregular uh, border, border just, crossers on the issue of for those who are seeking asylum to ensure that, that we work collaboratively, that, not only within our own government, but with the provinces and territories, but with the municipalities, fact, and I'm with other stakeholders to, to, to manage you there. this issue. The, if I could just conclude, Mr. Chair, that the fact that none of the re relevant agencies actually report to you suggests to Canadians that your appointment was actually more of a political statement rather than a practical fact. Thank you. As for possible solutions, the Conservatives suggest to extend the Safe Third Country Agreement to govern the entire border, although critics in the media have pointed out that this would not only be difficult to enforce, as it would require law enforcement along the entire 8,000 plus kilometer border, but it would also be difficult to get the American government to agree to. Perhaps this could be incorporated as a demand in the ongoing NAFTA negotiations although the Canadian government would have to make concessions in order to put the Americans in a more giving mood. It may be easier to just make Roxham Road a legal point of entry, so that the safe third country agreement would be extended to this area. Roxham Road is an unofficial port of entry between upstate New York and Quebec, just south of Montreal. It has been the choice entry point for 91% of illegal border crossers. It is clear that the federal government has to address this problem in some way, as according to recent polls, a majority of Canadians believe the government has been too generous with our border policies. I believe that the delayed and muted response by the federal government is a symptom of what I like to refer to as TDS, or Trump Derangement Syndrome. This is an affliction that has spread to citizens around the world, as well as media companies and even governments, in which Trump's non-traditional leadership style in general controversies have turned critics into blind contrarians, unable to critically analyze positive effects or actions executed by the Trump administration. In this case, the Trudeau government has been hesitant to impose any sort of immigration-related policy for fear of Trumpian comparisons, instead preferring to remain a sort of anti-Trump. While certainly there are times to oppose Trump, in this case, Canadians have been left with a costly mess at a time in which the federal government has already left us economically overextended with an unnecessary and growing deficit. Canada has also accepted 50,000 Syrian refugees as of 2015. Trudeau was elected on a mandate to accept 25,000 refugees from war-torn Syria, and has since doubled this figure. This promise was widely popular during the election, and the increased total, although lacking a mandate, is reasonable given the dire situation Syrians face in their home country. Curiously, the Trudeau government has not released a report on this group of refugees in the last two years. It is standard practice for governments to release a report detailing the integration of refugees into their adopted country society. Things like, are they getting educated and certified? Are they learning either of the official languages? Have they found a job? And are they still depending on government subsidies? These reports are common in countries that have received large amounts of refugees, such as Germany and Sweden, and even the Canadian government released one in the winter of 2016, but has since gone silent. The 2016 report was reasonably informative. It demonstrated that privately sponsored refugees were integrating effectively, with an employment rate of 50%, compared to government-assisted refugees, who are typically less educated and often illiterate, featuring an employment rate of only 10%. It is unclear if the government has continued to collect this information and is being untransparent or has abandoned tracking refugees and is simply being negligent. Either way, it's against the recommendations of the Auditor General. What do you think about Canada's refugee situation? Are the Conservatives warranted in calling it a crisis? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, like and share the video if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more interesting Canadian political content. I'm Daniel Tyree, and from all of us here at True North News, stay informed, friends.